along to, to talk to you today and to talk about some of the things that we're doing um, in, our, in our department to try and help teachers to increase the representation of diversity uh, in computer science teaching in UK schools through the CS for Fun project, which I'm about to tell you all about what that stands for. Um, at the top right of the first three slides, you should see a bit.ly link, and that is like a meta link. And everything that I mention in this talk, whether it's a website or a reference or whatever, it's all there. And I think Catherine has added that to the chat. So you should be able to click on that, May maybe do that at the end, otherwise you'll be a bit distracted. Uh, so a little bit about me. I've been working at Queen Mary University of London since 2011, and I've been working more or less exclusively on the CS for Fun project since 2015. And the work that I'm currently doing on the project is funded by the EPSRC. I have more or less two roles on the project. One is effectively a sort of embedded science writer. Uh, I write about computer science research for a non-technical audience. Uh, the other part of my role is project related admin. So the, the EPSRC funds me to work here two days a week doing stuff uh, on the CS for Fun project. Uh, so I work in EECS, that's, I, I don't know if everybody here is from EECS, that's the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science. I, I'm aware that other people from other departments or even outside the university uh, might have joined. Well, welcome all. Uh, and this is how you can contact me. Bottom left there is my email address, uh, CS for Fun. Actually, that's the, the team email address. Uh, and that is also in the bit.ly link as well, should you not be able to write it down quickly enough. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. I've made a little sort of a, a colourful wheel. So CS for Fun stands for Computer Science for Fun. It's a really big project. It's been running since 2005, so 18 years or whatever. Um, and it comprises many different things, including a lovely glossy magazine. This is an A4 magazine. Uh, we have a print run of about 21,000 copies, and we send that out to our 2,400, 2,500 subscribing UK schools, home educators and librarians. It's free and it's, it's a nice looking magazine. I'll show you a little animation later which goes through one of the magazines where you can see the layout and the style and it's a nice thing to hold. So we send that out free to, free to schools. Uh, we also have a series of school and uh, public talks, live shows and magic shows which are very popular and I should say actually um, EECS, that's my department, Electronic Engineering and Computer Science, has, has a program of schools talks. CS for Fun staff are just one of the groups of people who contribute uh, to that but there are plenty of other people who go out and give talks to schools as well. Uh, we also have a couple of websites for different age groups. So we have a bit of CS for Fun for very young children. I'm not really going to talk about that so much today. Uh, the CS for Fun website and Teaching London Computing website, so called because we were initially funded by the Mayor of London, and so that the London was, London was a focus, uh, but now it's open to absolutely everybody. And we publish uh, articles there regularly, and some of those articles will then go on to, to, to be included in, in a magazine edition. Um, we also have a, a sort of a, a range of posters celebrating diversity in computer science, and some of them are particularly relevant uh, to Black History Month, so I'll talk, talk about those. And a thing that we've started to do quite recently is uh, the creation of portals. So with um, a project that's been running for nearly 20 years with thousands of articles, um, they can get a little bit unwieldy. So we're, we're trying to find a way to help teachers and young people uh, to access our material in, in a slightly more coherent way, uh, rather than just having to use the search function or tags and categories. So this is sort of a meta categorization just to, to make things a little bit easier. So our remit, the CS of Fun remit is schools, uh, teachers and, and young people. So that, that's, that's who, who we primarily uh, deal with for, for this aspect of the project and the bit that I'm going to be talking to you about today. We do other things as well, but that's what the focus is today. So just to summarise sort of where we are in terms of school computing uh, and, and the CS Fund project, we know that there are gaps uh, in, in the curriculum. <laughs> the, 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 the England computing curriculum focuses more on the sort of technical side of things, how to teach programming, what a CPU is, what memory is, etc. And there's there's less opportunity uh, formally to talk about, you know, the people involved and the history involved and the way that computing can be used to support communities and the social justice aspect of, of computer science and how it affects different groups. Teachers are very keen to engage their students and make their lessons relevant to all pupils. I've been, I've been reading recently about culturally relevant teaching, uh, basically taking account of students' personal circumstances and their identities and backgrounds to try and make the, the lessons as relevant as possible to everyone uh, in the classroom to help sort of engage with people. But it's tough when you've got 50 minutes and you've got to you know, mark lots of 
you know uh, questions and homework and whatever so th th there's a lot going on uh, and it's it, it's it's quite difficult to to teach computing in a sort of a perfect way uh, the diversity gaps in computing as a whole are obviously well known i think um and that starts at the, at the with the teaching staff there are very few uh, black computer science teachers in, in UK schools and uh, that also has, has a knock-on effect on who takes computing at GCSE, A-level and, and so on uh, and of course industry as well uh, it, it's, it's not it's, you know diversity is a problem there as well and we know that young people make decisions about subjects that they're going to take or be interested in or study or whatever at a fairly young age in, in school so we sort of need to um, address their perhaps wrong assumptions and stereotypes that they've picked up about c the types of people who can do computer science. We're very keen in the CS for Fun project that computer science is a subject that can be done by absolutely everybody and that there should be no barriers and what we want to try and do is sort of break down those barriers. Uh, we also know that teachers are <laughs> incredibly busy. As I said, you know, uh, short, relatively short time to do the lessons, plenty of other things going on as well. And in particular for primary school teachers, uh, compared with secondary school teachers, primary teachers are usually generalists and they teach the whole range of subjects. So they teach all subjects, not just computing. So they are not computer science experts. Often in, in secondary schools, you may have someone who perhaps has a degree in computer science, although that's not necessarily common, but they, they tend to have more of a specialism. But with, pri with primary uh, teachers, they teach absolutely everything. And of course, there are a whole lot of resources out there for people to pick and choose what they want to, uh, to use variable quality and usefulness and so our, our role in this is to try and produce a range of what we think are good quality resources that are easy to use and ready to use that a teacher can print some of these things out uh, read through what, what the activity involves and then just get on and, and, and teach it uh, we also make um, ideas for classroom discussions as well and we hopefully provide uh, homework assignment suggestions as well and some non-fiction uh, reading material for younger pupils as well so we know that some of our, our material uh, particularly in primary classes, will go into the reading box and then children can sort of read at their leisure and, and, and see what we've um, what we've produced. So just to have a little potted history of um, the, the CSF Fund project. So it was co-founded in 2005 by professors Paul Curzon and Peter McCowan, who died in 2019. And the aim is always to have uh, fun resources that inspire children and teachers about the computing subject as, as a whole. Uh, there's, there's no particular drive to try and increase student um, recruitment to Queen Mary. That, that was never the intention. It was much more of an altruistic thing. You know, we would like to share computing with the world. So that, that is, that's basically been the main engine. Um, that said, my boss Paul tells me that uh, recruitment went up very rapidly after the uh, initiation of the CS of Fund project. And I think we now get about 700 um, applicants per year. So recru recruitment is good, but recruitment wasn't the driver. Altruism was really the driver to share our joy of, of the subject. So we do this through the magazine. And the most recent edition of the magazine is very relevant to Black History Month. It is about diversity in computing uh, with a particular focus um, on black computer scientists. And I'll, I'll show you a little animation of flipping through the pages in a, in a moment. Um, so we're now, that's issue not issue 29 of the magazine. Uh, issue 30 will be coming out sometime next year. And these are A4 20 page glossy magazines. We also have a bit of CS of Fun. So these are smaller, uh, shorter A5 magazines for, for younger, uh, written for a younger age group. And we also have um, booklets. So we have a puzzle booklet that's very popular because kids like doing puzzles. And we have a series of the magic of computer science. So that's a, a really great way to have an in with a class of, of kids. You show them a magic trick and then you explain that there's actually a link between the magic trick and uh, some aspect of computer science, whether that's algorithms or the way something is presented, the user interface, etc. Uh, and, you know, see the little eyes sort of light up and they, they find that you know, interesting and they're enthusiastic about it. Uh, so we have a huge, uh, in, in the link that you can see at the top right there, there's a link to our downloads, downloads page uh, where you can download all 29 copies of the magazine plus all of our booklets in, in PDF form. Everything is free except a couple of textbooks that we've also written. Or I say we, I, I haven't written them, but my, my, my colleagues have. Um, I've mentioned that we have um, several websites. We actually have two CS for Fun websites. One is a creaky old thing uh, that we're trying to now transfer all of our 
information from that website to our slightly quizzy and new one, uh, on, which is hosted on a, on a WordPress blog. And it's much it's much easier for people to interact with that. We can we can tag and categorize things uh, much better. So that that's a process that's ongoing. So we're transferring our old articles. We're writing new articles. Generally, um, every few days, a new article will go up or, or an old article that's been updated. So we, we keep our content fresh. There's a, there's a lot going on on the CS of Fun uh, blog. And of course, we have the, uh, the school talks and the live shows. And I've mentioned that Eeks as a whole also does this. It's not just uh, CS, of, CS of Fun. Um, we also um, organize the Royal Institution Masterclasses. Those, those happen all across the country in, in a variety of different universities. Queen Mary is just one of the organizations that's involved with that. So every year we run a series of workshops over a period of six weekends for 13 to 15 year olds, <coughs> pardon me, looking at some aspect of, of computing over those six weeks with different people giving different talks. Uh, and so those are very popular as well. So when CS for Fun staff first started going out and giving talks to schools, uh, they noticed that if those schools had any posters up on their walls, which many didn't, uh, they were generally of white men, computer scientists. There were very few women. You might occasionally see an Ada Lovelace or Grace Hopper or somebody like that, but there, there were really not very many women represented. So the first diversity uh, attempt to try, try and increase diversity uh, was directed towards um, increasing the representation of women in computing. So what we did at the time was go through our back catalogue of articles that were about women computer scientists and put them together and add some add some new articles as well into a sort of a bumper edition called the women are here which we then sent out to our approximately two and a half thousand subscribers plus a little poster that they could put on them was a three poster uh sort of advertising the fact that this magazine is available to read in their classroom um or in the library or whatever so so that that was a nice thing to do that was i think probably about 10 years ago now um and since then we've sort of expanded um our diversity you know, we broadened, broadened our diversity offering to people. So we now have a set of posters that cover things that are obviously uh, gender, but sexuality, age, uh, disability, etc. So all sorts of different things. And my colleague Jane, who's who's here, is actually the, the, the person who created these posters, uh, along with Paul Curzon. And I, I think they're brilliant. I wasn't involved in anything to do with creating them. Uh, I just helped distribute them to our um, to our subscribers. We printed 3,000 sets posted out two and a half thousand to subscribers and invited other teachers to you know to, to pile in and, and, and get and get some copies for their own for their own classrooms and so they, they went like hot cakes and I think they're all gone now and you might notice that there are two different color tones there and I, I think this is a really brilliant thing that, that Jane and Paul came up with so at the top there there is a muted palette and at the bottom there is the sort of a more vibrant color palette and I think sometimes you know during particular um week specials or month specials so for example black history month or international women's day etc you want to foreground the work that a particular subset of demographics are doing but the rest of the time i think it's quite important to have um a sort of a background marinade of people on your wall that you're sort of seeing subliminally and you're noticing uh, in the background that there are all these different people and that there's a plurality of people doing the subject and in in this in the um the accompanying web page with this uh, I've linked to uh, an, an audio clip where Anne-Marie Imaphodon, she's a black computer scientist, and she founded STEMETS to try and encourage girls into, into computer science. She talks about an experience she had as a young woman where a white colleague struggled to believe that she, as a young black woman, knew what she was talking about. Uh, they were trying to solve a problem. She made a suggestion. It was rejected. Later, somebody else came along saying they read the manual and the, the suggestion that she gave was the correct one. And, and her colleague was like, I don't understand. How can you, how can you know this? Uh, so th these posters are uh, are really popular with uh, with teachers, uh, but also quite nicely with some of the people who have been featured in them. So this is a a tweet that Christine uh, Farian uh, said, saying that she was she was glad to be part of part of the group, and uh, RAN Education they they were kind enough to share um, a, a link to the to the uh, to the posters with with their uh, their followers on Twitter and they're. they're a few more tweets here. Someone's downloaded them. I mean, we did print them out and send them to people, but after that time passed, people would have to download them and print them for themselves. And there are lots of other examples. Of, this, this is a really nice example, actually. Um, every week, there is a thing called CAS Chat, C-A-S, Computing at School. And it's a Twitter chat where, pe where teachers get together, ask and answer questions and share resources. So someone has specifically said, I'm trying to incorporate cultural capital and diversity into our computing curriculum. 
what can you suggest? And someone has volunteered us. That that wasn't me tweeting that, by the way. That was that was that was someone else. And uh, yeah, just just a few more slides saying you know great resources. <clears throat> Somebody asking for advice on how best to print them. <laughs> and uh, UK Black Tech are also celebrating as well. And this is a nice little example um, of uh, just how how they are used in the real world. So these are photographs taken by a teacher and published on Twitter. It shows our posters. Uh, on, on a wall presentation with a whole load of other stuff going on as well. So I think, I think that, that's really nice. OK, so that's the post on to uh, our various websites. So the new CS of Fun website is aimed at young people. So it's it's written, you know, we, 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 we include jargon, but we explain what it means. And we talk about all sorts of different topics. And I've just picked a couple that are particularly uh, relevant for, for Black History Month. So the first one is about the NASA women uh, whose uh, con contribution to the Apollo program was greatly overlooked until more recently and they've since been subject um, on film. So this is something that is um, part of Black History Month but it's also part of our computer science on film. There are several films that feature computational ideas so we, we, we include that as well. And then there's a more recent one about the gender shades audit which uh, arose from work done looking at um, facial recognition technology and the training material used black faces, white faces, various different skin tones, but it was predominantly white and it meant that the end product, in fact three end products, um, were less good at recognising darker skinned faces compared to white skin. So they weren't very good and they were sort of giving, giving errors, so not really very useful. So work was done to try and find ways of improving that. Uh, we also have our Teaching London computing website which is aimed at, at teachers. I think I've already said that it was teaching London computing because of our, our funding through the Mayor of London, but it's obviously it's a, it's a website, it's open to absolutely everybody. Uh, so because we have primary teachers who are not necessarily experts, we still try and avoid using you know too technical stuff. We, 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 try, we try and keep it reasonably generalist, but we do include a bit more nuance and information in there for teachers who want summaries of things that have been in the news. And so I've just shown an example there of our Computing and Society page there, which has sort of information that's relevant for Black History Month. Uh, and all of these links you can find on the page that's in the, in the chat. So a new thing that we've done, uh, and it's not just for Black History Month, it's, it's for everything, is portals to try and make it a little bit easier for people to find uh, our material because we as I said we have a lot of stuff uh, and it's you know it, it, after a period of time it becomes harder and harder to find stuff so we try and sort of gather it all together and, and, and uh, make it a little bit easier for people to, to navigate so that means that if a teacher asks us do you have anything about topic x or about this this demographic or whatever we can point them to a page on our portal's website and say yeah, go and have a look here so it's useful for teachers but it's also useful for us because it means that we can see what we have uh, and don't forget, I've, I've come to the project sort of 10 years in, so I don't necessarily know about every single thing that we've written in the past, but I'm now able, I'm better able to find our sort of historic information uh, and also to see what we lack. So we sort of we started to realise, for example, that we'd written quite a few articles that mentioned uh, Jewish computer scientists, but we didn't have a portal for Jewish computer scientists. So so once I finish this talk, probably one of the next things on my to do list will be to sort of to, to flesh that out and to, to add in a few of our articles and, and to write some, some new ones. And specifically for, for Black History Month, we have a page on our Teaching London teachers website with a little bit of information about each of the people uh, that you can find on those posters. Uh, and the, the idea, the intention is that they will use that in their classroom to encourage uh, the class, perhaps as a homework assignment, to investigate one or more of those people and perhaps write a little essay about them or just find out a little bit more about what they're doing, about the topic that they're doing um, as well. And uh, the, these portals for teachers have also been uh, Quite, quite popular. I've just found a few a few tweets uh, specifically relating to the diversity and black history ones. So th this, this uh, person is pointing out obviously that uh, young black people are underrepresented in computer science and while that tweet and even our material won't solve it, it, it you know, probably sort of chips away a little bit and, and can help. And there are a few other tweets as well, uh, somebody saying it's, it's, it's good that we have all this information about various different um, uh, di types of diversity. Uh, the MES computing department are actually using our material to uh, to talk about a different um, black computer scientist throughout throughout their Black History Month celebrations. Uh, and again, someone has asked a question on Twitter and someone who isn't me has volunteered uh, our information, which is always very nice to see. Uh, the way that you can find that out is, is literally by taking the link of whatever page you want to find out about, putting it into the search bar of Twitter and it will show you who has sent a tweet that includes that link. So that, that's how I did that. 
OK, so in the next slide, you'll see um, the front cover of issue 29, the diversity, and then a few seconds later, it will start cycling through uh, the pages. So you actually see the layout. I spent a little bit of time trying to make it there. Phew. OK, so <laughs> you can see what it looks like. You know, it's, it's got nice layout. It's got uh, nice graphics. There are various lengths of articles, short articles, longer articles, medium length. These can easily be photocopied. The, the thing folds flat. It's very easy to use in, in classroom uh, or in the library, and it's completely free. Uh, so we we write many, many articles. Not all of them will go into um, into a magazine. And the, the way that a magazine uh, generates, like the birth of a magazine is we notice that we have enough articles on a particular topic, and we think this would actually make a good themed article. And so, so we sort of start to direct our attention towards writing more articles so that we have a 20 page magazine to produce. The other way uh, in which uh, a magazine can, can be generated is that we're effectively sort of contracted out to other funded projects and they want to produce a CS for Fun magazine that talks a little bit about their project. So, so when we create a magazine, we don't focus solely on, on one project. We don't want to be a sort of a monoculture, but we'll talk about things that are relevant to that project and sort of things that are adjacent to it. So some examples there um, on the top right there, pardon me, Smart Health. Uh, that was Professor Norman Fenton's um, Pan Bayesian project, which looked at uh, Bayesian statistics and sort of mathematical modeling of um, decision making tools that healthcare professionals use. So we talked a lot about the Pan Bayesian project, but also more generally about how computer science can be used in the sort of the health sphere. Uh, the bottom right, cunning computational contraptions. And again, all of these can be downloaded from that link uh, that, I, that I gave and I will give again at the end. Uh, and I think it's in, in the chat as well. Um, that was a, a project from Oxford University with Professor Ursula Martin, looking at the history of physical devices that were used to help people calculate abacuses and so on, uh, and how that led into, into sort of computational com computer history. Uh, so that, that was quite, quite fun to do. The one bottom left is Machines Making Medicine Safer. And this was actually the first CS for Fun magazine that I worked on. So that was that was issue 17. At the time, Paul and I were working on a project looking at making medical devices safer, both from the, from the underlying algorithms, but also the interface and the way that, that doctors and nurses and increasingly patients uh, were interacting with them. So that, that was a, a fun magazine to do. Uh, and the top left is our memorial magazine for Peter McCowan. Um, after he died in 2019, we wanted to celebrate his life and his contribution to uh, computing and to Queen Mary and to CS for Fun. He was the, one of the co-founders. And so we, we created a magazine uh, that used some of the articles that he'd written in the past and articles that we wrote about him and, and about the work that he did in computer vision and in basically making uh, computer science what it is now. So. If you are a computer scientist working on an interesting topic, we would probably like to write about it. But also, if you're not a computer scientist, if you're working in a different discipline, but you use computing, you know, most people, uh, biologists, obviously, geographers, you know, data, whatever, uh, we're quite interested in, in, in the sort of the whole way in which people use computer science in all sorts of different ways for work and fun. So we, we're keen to hear from you. Um, we're coming towards the end now, just a couple of slides left. Um, so just wanted to say that funders are now really on board with um, producing material and supporting EDI more generally. And the project that I'm working on at the moment is I, I'm sort of like an accessory to Paul Curzon's EPSRC grant. He is one of five. Uh, ICT, Information and Computing Technology, I think they really mean computer science, but that's what they call it, public engagement champions. So there are five public engagement championships in computer science. We're all doing slightly different projects. And specifically, they have mentioned, particularly the one bottom left, that they want us to increase the visibility of a diverse range of role models. Now, we were actually already doing this before we got the funding. Those posters were created in 2018, 2019. So we were already doing a lot of these things. And that may have helped us, us get the funding, but we're going to do more of those sorts of things uh, in the future. But just, just to be aware that, that funding is available to support diversity generally in, in, in STEM, in, in science, not, not just computing. Uh, so some of our future work, so for specifically for uh, for relevance of Black History Month, uh, we're going to be resharing all of our materials. So the, the magazine came out in May. We've written articles over many years about Black computer scientists, and during Black History Month in October, we should be resharing that. So linking, uh, tweeting, blogging, etc. Uh, not just through through Twitter, but also uh, through Computing at School. So that's a 
I, I mentioned the, the computing at school chat on Twitter, but there's also a forum. Uh, they have their own website, so I'll, I'll, I'll be adding stuff there as well. Uh, and we'll also add some items to our, our TES website. So we have a, a TES shop, even though everything that we produce is, is free. And the good thing about that is that uh, many, many teachers that we've worked with in the past already know about us. But of course, there are new teachers, you know, uh, joining the teaching staff, uh, you know, every, every year who, who don't necessarily know about us, but they do know about TES. So if we're putting stuff there, then we're able to, to reach them and support them. <clears throat> Uh, Paul is going to be uh, writing some more articles uh, for Black History Month, as am I, and Paul's also been, as, as part of our wider project, uh, he's been running a series of workshops with postgraduate students here in EECS, uh, writing workshops about writing for young people, and I think he's been encouraging them to write something about diversity, so hopefully uh, they might produce something, but obviously if anybody listening would like to write an article uh, that, that's relevant, we, we, we'll be glad to add that to our list. Uh, we'll also be creating new diversity posters. I've mentioned that we've written many new um, articles about different black computer scientists and about topics that are relevant uh, you know, to, to people of, of dark skin. And so we want to add some of these people to our list of posters and also to create posters for a younger audience as well. Because as I've said, you know, people at that young age are really starting to think about you know, how, compu how, how computing works for them or not, whether or not they think of themselves as a, a computer person, even if they're, you know, they might be good at computing, but not necessarily think of themselves as a computer person because they've sort of formed some perhaps unhelpful ideas about the subject and about the people that, that do it. So we would like to, to create some, some posters for them, but that's probably for next, for next year, to be honest. Um, but also one of the things I've been looking at, and I think, I think there's a gap in the market, although I don't know, I, think, I don't think we have the funding and possibly we don't really have the capacity to do this. But obviously young people are learning about computer science and about the world at school, but they're also learning through books and play and libraries and all sorts of things. And I think there's, there's a gap in the market for British focused books for young black kids about computing. There seem to be quite a lot uh, for American kids, particularly mm -hmm. American girls, um, but I haven't seen very much that's, that's specifically focused at, um, <coughs> pardon me, at, at black boys. Uh, but I, I don't know how useful these American books are for a British audience. I haven't read them. I, I, need, to, I need to go and have a look at them. But I think I think there's sort of a gap in the market, perhaps, uh, for us to, for someone <laughs> to write write uh, fiction or non-fiction books that feature black computer scientists uh, that's tailored uh, to a UK audience. So that's actually the end of my my talk. That was a bit quicker than I imagined. Uh, rattling through. So that's that's the bit.ly link that will take you to um, all of the stuff that I've mentioned, plus a little bit extra. Um, so, so my colleague Jane now works at Raspberry Pi, and I've read some of their material. It's really good. And I've, I've put some links to their stuff at the end. Uh, I didn't have any heckles. I don't know if there are any questions, <laughs> but I will stop presenting. And uh, I don't know if you want to stop recording so that people can ask questions. Yeah. On camera.